Hello friends, welcome to Live Traveling. Today, we'll see Best things to do in Acapulco, Mexico. Everyone has heard of Acapulco, the glossy beach resort that was the haunt of stars like Sinatra, Bardo, and Elizabeth Taylor in the mid-20th century. Backed by the mountains of the Sierra Madre del Sur, Acapulco has three tourist areas, Las Playas in the north, where the city first took shape, the high-rise golden zone on the Arc of the Bay, and the newer Punta Diamante, now emerging as a luxury escape. One thing to mention about Acapulco is that its crown has slipped since the 90s. That is all down to a cartel war, and while the violence rarely affects tourists, it's a serious deterrent. But with luxury developments sprouting in secluded Punta Diamante, and a new tunnel easing notorious traffic congestion, Acapulco is hoping to regain some of its 20th century sparkle. Fort of San Diego Acapulco's top historical monument is its Star Fort, first erected in 1617 to ward off pirate attacks. At the time it was the strongest fortification on Mexico's Pacific coast and was built to protect the Manila Galleons, a fleet that sailed the Pacific trade route between Acapulco and Spanish-controlled Manila in the Philippines. After earthquake damage in the 1770s it was rebuilt in a regular pentagonal shape. In the following decades the fort saw military action, first during the Mexican War of Independence when it was besieged by insurgents, and then during the French intervention in Mexico in the 1860s. Acapulco Historical Museum Since 1986 there has been a museum inside the fort, detailing Acapulco's past and explaining the fort's role during important moments over the last 400 years. Most interesting are the details about the Manila Galleons, piracy in the Pacific Ocean, and commerce with Japan and China. You can view a model of the galleons that cross the Pacific and some authentic imported artifacts like porcelain vases. The exhibition goes further back in time to document the pre-Hispanic Mescala culture, which inhabited parts of the modern state of Guerrero between 700 BC and 650 AD, and is recognized by its highly distinctive geometric stone masts and figurines. La Quebrada Cliff Divers at La Quebrada, which means ravine in Spanish, there's a narrow inlet wall by vertiginous cliffs where divers have been performing spectacular jumps for crowds since at least 1934. What makes the feat so difficult is the water they dive into, the divers have to wait for a wave to come in to ensure that the water is deep enough and avoid injury. They'll climb the cliffs without ropes and leap from ledges at 12 and 24 meters, and there are daily shows at 1300 hours, 1930, 2030 and 2130. You'll have to pay a small fee, 2 US dollars and 50 cents, to see the show from a platform, or get a table at La Perla restaurant on a terrace beside the cliff. Capilla de La Paz you can arrange a tour to this monument, 400 meters above the eastern entrance to the bay. The chapel sits on the hill El Guitarin, one of the highest points in the city, and with a supreme view of the beachfront, cityscape and the Sierra Madre del Sur. The chapel was commissioned at the turn of the 1970s by the developer Carlos Triet in memory of his two sons who died in a plane crash in 1967. The chapel holds Triet's tomb, along with those of his wife Millie and sons Jorge and Carlos Jr. The site also hosts a 40-meter high cross and a sculpture of two clasped hands, Las Manos de la Hermandad, by Claudio Favier. Mural Diego Rivera, one of Mexico's great 20th century artists and the on-off husband of Frida Kahlo left his mark on Acapulco when he stayed in the city in 1956. Diego Rivera's work adorns the exterior walls of the home of Dolores Olmedo, the famous art patron with whom he had a long-term relationship. The mural is one of Rivera's final works before he passed away in 1957 and is a three-dimensional mosaic rich with pre-Hispanic symbols. You can identify Tlaloc, the Aztec god of rain, lightning, and thunder, and a Zolo at Squintle, hairless dog. The dominant images are the two feathered serpents of Quetzalcoatl facing off on either side of the gate. Punta Diamante This new, fast-developing part of Acapulco is outside the main bay, on the sandbar in front of the Laguna de Tres Palos to the southeast. And while Punta Diamante may not have the charm and buzz of old Acapulco, what it does have is space and convenience. The airport is moments away, and since 2017 journey times have been slashed by a new tunnel to the traditional prime tourist zone of Dorada around the bay. 
Rolling out for several kilometers along the ocean is a continuous sandy beach, which is broad and shallow and has surf that breaks up to 100 meters out, so kids will be safe. Barra Vieja on the same beachfront as Punta Diamante. Barra Vieja is a few kilometers further along the sandbar. Barra Vieja is the place to escape Acapulco's crowds, as both the relatively far-flung setting and the size of the beach allow room for everyone. As with Punta Diamante, the beach is on a gentle gradient so even though the waves are strong there's a lot of shallow water. In high season you can choose from dozens of palapas, palm huts, cooking up fish like red snapper caught that same day. The Trace Vidas Golf Courses is an 18-hole championship course on a slight elevation with invigorating ocean views. Playa Pai de la Cuesta northwest of Acapulco the city starts to thin out and after about 10 kilometers of twisting coastal roads you'll come to Pai de la Cuesta. Quiet, laid back and clear of traffic, this village is at the easternmost point of another sandbar between the Pacific and the expansive Laguna de Coyoca. To relax you don't need to go further than the beach, which goes on for miles and is very accommodating. There are palapas behind with restaurants where you could just order a cocktail like a Coco Loco and watch the boisterous surf. The ocean is a little too powerful to swim in, but is stunning at sunset, and during the day youngsters can go for horse rides along the shore. Isla La Roqueta This lush, undeveloped island is just south of Las Playas at the western entrance to Acapulco's Bay. The main beach is a tranche of golden sand facing back towards Acapulco, fringed by restaurants and lapped by gentle, transparent waters. You can get there from Playa Caleta, either by boarding a tourist boat or catching a ferry. And while the tourist boats can make things easier, providing food, a tour of the island's waters and even a show, you may prefer the freedom of making your own way across by ferry and being able to go where you want. One of the main sites is the Virgin de los Mares, a submerged image of the Virgin Mary, while there are two reefs Piedra de Elefante and Piedra de Hierbabuena, loaded with vibrant underwater life. Our Lady of Solitude Cathedral conceived by the architect Federico Mariscal, Acapulco's cathedral was built in the 1940s and 50s. Its predecessor had only been started in the 1900s, but was toppled by an earthquake and subsequent hurricane. The cathedral's architecture is unique in Mexico, fusing Art Deco, Moorish and Byzantine styles. The two towers, crowned with colorful domes clad with mosaics look more like the minarets of a mosque than traditional church towers. The apses inside are lined with blue and gold tiles, beneath geometric stained glass windows. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe.